After adding support for Gemini 2.0 Plus just a few days ago, Windsor has released a new wave of updates with tons of new features. So here are some new updates that you probably need to know. First, they introduced something called Model Context Protocol or MCP. If you never heard of that, then don't worry, we are on the same page here. But from what I can understand, MCP was originally created by Anthropic just a few months ago as a way to let AI retrieve data from a specific source. For example, you could let Cascade or Windsor AI access data directly from your Google Drive document. The document might contain some info about how AI should proceed with your request. It could contain info like API key, username, what color the website should be, what language the AI should be using, and much more. If you feel like this is basically just like web access or doc access that was released on the web too, then you would be right, that's really the idea of MCP. But the application goes even deeper. You could collaborate on GitHub and then let Windsurf access the repository in real time. This way, the data is always dynamic and up to date. Essentially, MCP is the backbone of building AI agents. And if you want to learn more, this video from Gaudali explains model context protocol really well. I will leave the link in the video description. Next, did you know that you can generate code in Windsurf with a cascade? The super complete feature predicts the code that you are about to write. Just press Ctrl I or Command I on the keyboard, type some prompt, and hit enter. Now, the feature just got expanded with something called tap to jump. In a nutshell, it understands the code and will automatically jump the cursor to the next item that you might want to edit. This is especially useful to speed up some repetitive tasks. But make sure you enable both super complete and tap to jump on the Windsor settings in order to use them. And another new update that I found extremely useful is the UI upgrade to display credits. Now, instead of guessing how many credits you just use for a prompt, Cascade will display it for you. Just scroll down to the end of the AI response, click the summary icon, and see the summary of credits, tool calls, and other actions that Cascade might use. And as always, each model has a different pricing, so the number could vary. And if you don't want to manually accept the suggested terminal comment, then this new feature might be useful. You can enable the Turbo mode in Windsor settings to let Cascade execute the command without asking for confirmation. This Turbo mode is even more independent than the Auto mode, which will make the workflow faster and more efficient. Although in my experience, Cascade doesn't always suggest the right command, so proceed with caution. And lastly, this new update is related to the image attachment. I initially thought that finally, Cascade Base and possibly other models like DeepSeq R1 or DeepSeq version 3 support image attachment. But well, I was wrong. Right now, still only GPT-40 and Cloud 3.5 Sonnet that can see a picture. The new update was merely a support to drag and drop an image to Cascade, a gesture that will save you probably 5 seconds over 12 hours of work. That's quite disappointing, but I'm still hopeful that we will have more multimodal AI in the future. Finger crossed. And that's all the important updates from Wave 3. There are some other tiny upgrades as well, and if you are interested to learn more, I'll put the link in the video description. Anyway, if you're curious to see which AI model in Windsor that you should be using, then click this video, and thanks for watching. Have a great day.